Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Pack one, pick one, what do we like? Is it time for mono red? I think it might be time for mono red. Sarkon, a bit expensive for mono red, but it is a perfect curve topper. I can maybe wield Berserker. Sure. Let us fight. Don't have to be mono red, of course, but it's usually not a bad idea. Well, that makes it easy. Chandra, perfect follow up. Or rather, Sarkon, perfect follow up to Chandra. Kenra could also be nice, light up the stage, although this might be kind of a big red version that goes a bit bigger. So now we also would mind some artifact ramp like Mindstone or Maze Mind, or a, not Maze Mind Tome, but Guardian Idol. Take a Pillar of Flame as some cheap removal. Cultivator's Caravan could also be reasonable. But I'll take the Pillar. Just want some cheap interaction to kill mana creatures. Protect our Planeswalkers. Sometimes you can plus Chandra for mana and cast a removal spell just to keep increasing the loyalty instead of having to use the minus three. Lava Coil's fine. Could jump into white for Tajik. Tajik's okay. Probably not strong enough of a, an incentive to make our mana base a lot worse. And don't think we want Magma Quake when we have a bunch of Planeswalkers ourselves. Nothing wrong with a Daredevil. Fine on turn two, but also pretty good later. Could also make a case for Sahili if we want to stick to kind of the Super Friends theme. Can make a whole bunch of 1 1 tokens with it. Since so far we don't have any creatures yet. So Sahili could be better. Sure. Today I craft my victory. Well, we could go blue reds, take a brazen borrower. Double vision could be okay, although so far we have a lot of planeswalkers as well that don't synergize with it. And I don't think we're going quite to Dracoseth. Although we do have Chandra that can ramp, so maybe if we find some artifact ramp we could still make that work. Don't think it's icy between Dracoseth and Borwer, I think for me. I think if we can stick to mono red, that's probably better. Let's try Dracoseth here. And... Well, if we're going big, there's treasure map. A Lotus is probably overkill. Channeler could be okay. Or I can take a Sacred Foundry, in case we want to splash white instead. Well, map could be okay here. The way this deck is shaping up, we're going a little bit bigger than your typical mono red aggro. Alright, well, it's more red planeswalkers if we want them with Chandra. Pretty good synergy with the first zero ability. Uh, Torbran could also be great, of course, if we're mono red. So now the question is do we. Want to be a bit more aggro, in which case Torbrand's going to be better, or do we want to go more super friends, in which case we probably want Chandra. Yeah, I think Chandra might be better here. Also gets back our removal spells. Although Torbrand's one of those cards that always does a lot of work, so it's, it's definitely a close call. Berserker wields, probably don't need Bag of Holding. Could use some cheap creatures, even though this uh, would be better in the more aggressive build. Still a 2-2 first strike, so blocks pretty well too. And we have Sarkon and Dracoseth for a bit of dragon synergy. Uh, this is not going to be a great line up the stage deck since our curve's pretty high. Goblin Rune Blaster, on the other hand, could be interesting. Would be better if we have some 2-mana artifact ramp so we can play turn 3. Or I could take a line up the stage anyway. Yeah, Rune Blaster seems unlikely to make the cuts. I'll take a line of the stage, but probably not gonna end up playing it. Arch could be good if we're mono red, does a nice value land. Engine, probably a bit too janky. 
Don't think we have any great synergy with module. I guess it does add loyalty counters with the activated ability. Eh, nah, I'll stick, still take the arch. Nothing here. Maybe cleansing Nova if we end up red white kind of controlling. Or illumination in case we want to go blue. I could see Cleansing Nova being okay if we end up a red-white control. And then we wield a double vision, sure. Although, so far, probably just going to be Monoret, unless we are persuaded by something else. And what did we open? Well, I see a Mind Stone, which would be quite nice in kind of the big red deck. Frenzy, not going to be at its best, better in a burn deck. Insult to Injury, also better in a more aggressive deck. Although still quite powerful if we can cast both halves in the same turn. Yeah, we'll Mind Stone. And I do like a fight with fire, good removal, potential win condition. Castle Ambreath would be amazing if we had more creatures. And then there's an Ox as another way to draw extra cards, but I think we're doing okay in terms of expensive top-end cards. So we'll take the removal spell. Ooh. Man, there's some good options here. Two, two red Planeswalkers. One of them might wheel. But Rekindling Phoenix can be a huge pain for a lot of decks to deal with. A blocker that can keep coming back can eventually win the game. And, uh, yeah, we can potentially even cast it on turn 3 in this deck. And then hope to wheel either Tybalt or Chandra Heart of Fire. Alright, the hits keep on coming. Mm, Skewer versus Shock. In this deck, I think I prefer Shock, since we're not going to be great at enabling Spectacle. Lightning Axe also an option, but uh, card disadvantage is a real factor. If we get one good attack in to make a treasure, it helps us ramp. Don't think we need Shadow Spear. And don't see a strong incentive to move out of Monoret now. Also has a bit of synergy with Treasure Map. Lightning Strike seems great. Toralf, better in a deck that has more creatures where we can use the equipment. Although the passive ability on Toralf could come up with some of our Planeswalkers, I suppose. I'll take a Lightning Strike. Siege Gang's good, but I think we gotta take the Guardian Idol as more 2-mana ramp. And Rebuke's fine, there's also Sky Sovereign, although our deck is gonna struggle to crew it. So we'll go with a 2-mana removal spell. Alright, let's see if we can wheel one of those red planeswalkers. Either one of them would be fine. And ramping into Dracoseth might actually happen in this deck. Yeah, still don't love any of these. Captivating crew is pretty mediocre, but it's like playable if we need a 4-drop. I'll take a crew. And then we wield Ox. Well, seeing that all those red cards wield, we're probably going to get one of the Planeswalkers back. If we get both back, which do we prefer, Chandra or Tybalt? Um, now that we've Ox, maybe Tybalt to empty our hand faster. Alright, well, we didn't have a choice. I would be honored to break your mind. So, Monorad Super Friends is happening. Got three, four, five planeswalkers already. Some nice removal, some ramp, a bit of card draw with arch and treasure map. And we still have an entire pack left to make some upgrades. So far, some of the weaker cards include Captivating Crew. Um, yeah, a Coom Warrior. You know, it's a tap land with upside of late game being a spell. 
Didn't think we need a lightning axe when we have a bunch of cheap removal already. Why do I love Krakens? I just can't help myself. This is not the best Hazard deck, but Hazard's still pretty messed up. So we're probably taking it. Alternative would be a card that we can only cast one half of, or Scattering Surveyor, so I'll take my Hazard. Our game plan is stabilize the board with our cheap interaction, and then try and take over with Planeswalkers and some big scary creatures. So nothing here really. Blast Zone, maybe. Banneret's like a red aggro card, not a big red card. But I could see Blast Zone doing some work. Beaumont Courier, great mono red aggro card. Not at its best in this deck, although Perforce's Intervention could be fine removal. Crush the weak gives us a sweeper, or we can take a Hedron Archive for ramp. Kind of liking the Archive here, to be honest. Although we don't have any sweepers yet, there's a chance we can wheel Crush the weak. Whereas Archive gives us a bit of a unique effect here to ramp into Dracoseth. And then there's a decent chance we wheel Crush the weak, since it's only the fourth pick here. Enclave has a bit of synergy with cards like Phoenix, but probably not amazing. And we already have a few colorless lands. So now we've got Mirror versus Royal Eruption. I think we're taking Royal Eruption. Don't really need Pyromancer in Big Red. Great Mono Red Aggro card, of course. Yeah, I mean, Mirror could also be okay here. We've got a few expensive cards worth ramping into. But the flexibility of Royal Eruption is quite nice as well. Ooh, a couple options. Deemworthy can be cycled for 4 mana to deal 2 damage and draw a card. Or 7 damage to a creature. Versus Magma Jet as a cheap removal spell that lets us scry 2, giving us a bit of card selection. So they're both reasonable. I think I'm leaning Deemworthy just to have removal for big stuff, which we currently don't have a ton of. Like we've got Fight with Fire dealing 5, but the opponent ramps into, let's say, an Elder Gergroth. Deemworthy can be a nice answer. And Awakening is a perfect upgrade to our mana base, although, hmm, there's also Maze Mind Tomb. As much as I like Maze Mind Tomb, this might be a deck that has so many playables that I just want to upgrade my mana base with a Valakut Awakening. We have a lot of 2 drops already. And we're mostly trying to curve out. Whereas this can just replace a mountain. A braid's perfect. Well. It's uh, not too difficult to draft a monocolor deck in this cube, as it turns out. Alright, so we need to make some tough cuts. Someone can have their bannerets. I'll take Phyleth. So what are some of our weaker cards? Maybe Intervention, Captain Lannery, Captivating Crew. We did wheel Crush the Week, so that's something I can consider playing. A bit of a nombo with our Sahili and Tybalt, but a nice anti-aggro card. Although our deck has a lot of anti-aggro cards already, so it's mostly an anti-token card specifically. So we'll have to think about it. Uh, Hazaret can be awkward in this deck, but it's a great finisher. And I'm kind of liking Dracoseth now, especially if we're going to play the Palladium Mirror as additional ramp. So Awakening we can consider as a Lance and a Coom Warrior as well. So Intervention, Crew... A Lannery Storm. 
Although Lannery Storm's not bad in this deck since we have so many cheap removal spells to clear a path so we can attack with her unopposed and make a treasure token, so that can definitely come in handy. Uh, Berserker I still kind of like. Same reason why Lannery could be okay. I uh, don't know if we actually need Crush the Weak, but it's a consideration. Kind of liking the Palladium Mirror. Hazaret is like, maybe. So I need to make seven cuts, assuming 17 lands, although with Awakening and Warrior we can kind of count those as half a land each. So let's say I cut all of these. I'm at 41, so I still need to make one cut. I mean, Archive, you know, it only ramps into Dracoseth, but it also helps us double spell, which can be useful and can always be sacrificed to draw cards later. So it does a few things besides just ramping into Dracoseth. Yeah, and it is true that Palladium Mirror could be an easy target of opposing removal spells, whereas we don't really present many creatures early on. So that's maybe a reason to cut it still. Although ramping into Sarkon is quite nice. Maybe Captain Lannery is better than Mir, since we can at least attack with it once and secure a treasure token. But then I still need to make a cut. Yeah, we could make a case for cutting Pillar of Flame perhaps, because we have a bunch of two mana removal. And our deck seems to be curving out reasonably well, so the one mana difference between this and a two mana removal spell isn't huge. And we do have a lot of cheap removal. Sure. Fine hand. Question is, do I play the Awakening tapped? So this hand can curve Idle into Archive. And then we can easily cycle Deemworthy to draw a card. If we're up against a deck that doesn't present many early creatures, then we might want Awakening to shuffle these away and draw into some of our Planeswalkers. But if I don't play Awakening tapped, I might not be able to curve Idle into Archive. So close call here. I think I should still hang on to it, since if we draw lands, I can get rid of them and I could easily see this being a matchup where we don't want a ton of removal. Hmm, interesting. Could just turn to Berserker. Yeah, sure. If I had, let's say, a Dracoseth in hand, obviously I would be willing to ramp into it. But currently it seems okay to just put a bit of pressure on them and then delay our idle, and then we can decide if we want to play Awakening Tapped or not. And maybe ramp into the Dragon ability. Ooh, alright. Now I'm definitely regretting my line of play, but that's okay. Could Lava Coil, probably just gonna idle so we're guaranteed Chandra next turn. Points attacking. Maybe they're just gonna replay Haka. Then I can Chandra plus for mana Lava Coil, so we keep the loyalty high. Sadly, cannot use the mana ability to make a dragon since the floating mana is gonna go away. It's not like Burgi. That's the main reason. Opponent passes with counterspell mana up. Sure, we'll just attack and then. We'll see what happens. I could just go land to make a dragon, so they're taking a pretty big risk here by letting me attack. Alright, they had a trickster, which I can let the trade happen to be fair, or I can cycle Deemworthy, kill it, or I can, you know, let the trade happen and then Chandra, and then just deal two damage to them. I think I just want to let the trade happen and resolve Chandra. You want to play with fire, huh? 
Alright, now I gotta hope they don't have any bounce spells, because we have plenty of removal to protect her. Mm, yep. So, gonna play lands, play archive. I guess I can start by just using the first plus ability since I'll have the mana to just uh, kill Haka here without having to add double red. And then probably hang on to Royal Eruption, which can also go face. Alright, so we've got plenty of mana. Can potentially draw more cards if we have to. This'll be easy. Save myself the one mana here. And then I guess I'll main phase cry. And then I could still attack with Guardian Idol. They could also have a flash creature, in which case we want to keep up Deemworthy. Mm, yeah, that seems okay. Although I cannot draw and cast it this turn. So I guess we'll surf with the Guardian Idol here. And even if they have a Spectral Sailor to hit my Chandra for one, I'll still be able to ultimate thanks to Acolyte of Flame. Could have maybe played around that a little bit better and kept up my Deem Worthy. Now they can hit Chandra for two. Ooh, opponent takes a risk here. If Anklight of Flame resolves, we can still ultimate. Yeah, that still works, so I guess opponent wanted to draw a card. Cycling Deemworthy also kills Octopus even through a counter spell. Although we kind of need to bait out a counter so we can resolve Anklight of Flame. Now one card that's potentially scary is Disallow, which can counter the ultimate from Chandra Torch of Defiance. So if that's what they have in hand. We could be in trouble. Of the mind. I guess they are just going to mill us, maybe? So what's the plan then? Um, we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana potentially. So this I kind of want to kick, which is 7 mana, so that doesn't leave enough to then kill the Octopus with my Deemworthy. So I guess we just deal with the creatures and then try to ultimate next turn. Yeah, adding mana might be slightly better here. Idol could also go after Jace. If we hit for 2 plus 3 from Royal Eruption... But then I'm not protecting my Chandra. I don't know, we'll just do this. See what we draw first. Well, there's something worth ramping into. <laughs> Alright, we'll see how this plays out. So Bounce Spell could be bad, and a Disallow could be bad. Ox, gonna be a nice one to escape. A lay Claim, I guess, would also be bad, yes. That's okay. So I get to untap, I could scry with map. I think I just take my draw. 
So could just cast Drunkuseth, see if it resolves before deciding whether to ultimate Chandra or not. And then I can still add mana, escape Ox if I want. Although I do have enough cards in Graveyard, I guess I need one more. So if I ultimate and they disallow what happens, I just play Drunkuseth. Which, you know, is fine, but they could easily interact with. I think we ultimate here. Oof, obstruction is cycled. It's basically the same as disallow. Sit back and watch it burn. Well, at least we have a Drunkus Seth now. Into Essence Scatter. And then I can escape Ox. Well, they had the answer they needed here. So they seem more like a tempo deck than a pure control deck, but they still have a scantine there. So they definitely seem to be on the milieu plan. So we can expect a couple bounce spells. Ooh, an active Thassa. Can tap down Drakuseth with her ability and blocks Ox, so it's kind of the perfect solution here. We'll scry. And that helps. So opponent's gonna spend four mana tapping my Dracoseth. And then five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can exactly fight with fire their face for ten. That works. Well, this game could not have been any more epic. On the play, if we find a third and fourth lands, Sahil into Archive, into eventually the Draco sets, looks good. Alright, just gonna need that third lane pretty badly. We're just going to go for the big play. Next turn I can copy Hedron Archive with Sahili as well. Still probably jam Drunkoseth. And then they'll have to answer it. Which they probably will. I imagine they'll take Chandra. Of 
takes a rebuke. Interesting. So they might have some creatures or planeswalkers they want to protect. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, Lightning Strike. So let's see, I can Chandra, get a token from Sahili. Probably just gonna draw with Archive end of turn. Make two tokens. So if I do this right, So this is the 4 damage trigger, I'm assuming. Well, that's a missed opportunity. Fine, I can see I'm not wanted. Could also wait until next turn to archive my token. And then... Draw with the token, essentially. I see. So they wanted to steal my Dracoseth, but I just need to find an answer for Hostage Taker. Shouldn't be too difficult. And we have a lot of time since they're far away from casting it. So now do I want to main phase sack Archive? Feels like a desperation play. I'm gonna go for the value. Well, that also works, I suppose. You and I are gonna take so out. you become this. I know how to and then we'll sack you to draw two. And then a braid works. can add mana, but I guess I can just cast it. So we'll plus first. Yep. You're going down. And then this can plus adding loyalty. And then I guess we'll kill the hostage taker now. Keep Awakening in hand. All in a day's work. Next turn we can ultimate Torture Defiance by adding loyalty again. Let's see if we need to play around Nimble Obstructionists this time. We don't. So yeah, next turn we were gonna ultimate Chandra. And our opponent would pretty much be dead on the spot. Yeah, we could have also gone with a line of turning the token into Drunkoseth after killing Hostage Taker. Also would have made sense. Um, what about this one? On the play, turn to Berserker, turn 3, Sahili, Tibal to buy time. Although we'll need to find another mountain. Sure. They held priority with an island, but didn't counter Sahili, so what is this? No end of turn spectral sailor either. Maybe an unsummon. Or like a dive down. 
That's not gonna stay in play. Could also be a cycling card, for sure. So next turn we could potentially make a dragon. Well, there's more dragons. Move to combat first. In case I have a counter spell here. I do miss out on a Sahili attack potentially, but I'm probably just gonna make a dragon token. Well, now I can just boast. That way, if they're sitting on a sweeper, we'll be able to follow up with Sarkon. Next turn, we could do some fancy things with Sahili as well, turning our token into another dragon, so we can play this on the cheap, or activate this on the cheap. Now if they just pass with a bunch of mana up, it becomes kind of risky to minus Sahili on the servo with a dragon, because if they kill the dragon, that could be bad. But then I can maybe resolve Sarkon. Alright, so they did have the sweeper, as we sort of expected. So now it's Sarkon time. And then I think we'll just make a dragon token. Now what happens if I turn Planeswalkers into creatures and then use Sahili's ability on the token? I think we'll have to sack a Sahili to the legendary rule. So that's probably a bad idea. This is where the interactions with Sarkhan get pretty complicated. Let's just make a dragon and keep it simple. So we've got them um, kind of covered from a bunch of different angles. All right, Kaya's pretty good. It's an answer to Sarkon. This only hits creatures. Um, for single black, I guess Fatal Push would be a bit of a disaster, but I think this turn Guardian Idol, Tybalt, make a couple tokens, turn Servo into a dragon. Hmm. They are still holding priority with that same mana, although last time it was an island, so it's probably just a cycling card of some sort. Maybe a Pact of Negation? The only thing to fear is... <laughs> so Fatal Push would be bad if I make this play, but... Kind of want to smack them for 4 and kill Kaya. Alright. So let's see, this is the token goes after Kaya, the real dragon goes face. And then we still have Drunkoseth waiting in the wings, Arch for card draw. So we're looking good. Alright, so that's killing everything but the dragon.
And our opponent is at 8, so I do have the play of animating Guardian Idol. Let's double check Sahili here. So target artifact we control, Guardian Idol, copy of another target artifact or creature, Dragon Token, so they're taking 8 in the air here. On the play, this ends good with the third land. Alright, so we can try and kill their mana creature and tap Lannery. And then we just want to empty our hand as quickly as possible. So I can, let's see, sack a treasure, pump lannery, play Tybalt main phase, one mana, can shock the token, and then play tap the Kum Warrior. This way we pump lannery by one. And if we draw a land, I could potentially play both next turn. Alright, so... Which creature do we want a Royal Eruption? Lava Mancer threatens to kill Lannery, Incubation Druid threatens to ramp. Thinking Cubusion Druid's probably the scarier card for now. And now we're on the Dracoseth ramp plan. Alright. Don't think we need to kill Lapamancer here. Well, Captain Lannery definitely provided a nice tempo advantage this game. And then probably take out Lannery.
Alright, and then next turn we can cast Rakuseth. Which is pretty good against red green typically. Who Thraktusk negated by Tybalt. Although they could kill Tybalt here with a rebuke. But now Drakuseth is more likely to survive, which I imagine is gonna take over this game. Land's okay, still lets me scry with the map. Right, do you have an answer for Maw of Flames? You do not. Alright, on the draw, this hand's missing two mana interaction, but it could still work out. Lannery to ramp into either Chandra or Phoenix. Alright, so we're on track to cast Chandra into Sarkon, perhaps. Alright, so we get to it with Lannery. Ooh. I mean, Lannery is probably still better than Tybalt, even though we could live the dream of curving three Planeswalkers into each other. Which is good with Sarkon, but the extra mana seems more useful. Kind of liking Chandra plus play Tybalt, and then next turn Sarkon turns them both into Planeswalker or into Dragons. Her point on Sultai control. If they kill Chandra, I'll probably just Sarkon make a dragon token. And then turn after we can send with Tybalt and Sarkon. I imagine Phoenix is also going to be quite good in the matchup. Unless they've got a big reach creature which we can maybe kill with Deemworthy. Alright, Vivian is gonna plus one, so she's gonna die to Sarkon turning Planeswalkers into creatures. And then plus with the first ability, although we're not casting whatever we find, but might as well get to two damage. Could also go face hit him for 9 down to 5. Um, it is tempting. But killing Vivian is also quite nice. I'll be back. And they still have a lot of stuff they need to deal with.
Marashmi seems pretty weak unless they can follow it up with some interaction. Well, embarrassment of riches here. Can kick this. Let me actually activate this first. So even if they kill one of my planeswalkers, they're still dead to the royal eruption. Needed to hit something off Rashmi here, basically. A dragon does not lose. <laughs> A dragon does not lose. You heard it here first. On the play. Hmm. <clears throat> so the sand's kind of all in on Berserker surviving. And then we've got a lot of ways to clear a path for it. I don't love it, but it's also not bad enough to mulligan, I don't think. All right, our hand got a lot more exciting now. Turn four, we could already boast. A mill deck. Well, don't really mind seeing that. And Chandra off the top. Those were two back-to-back -to -back great top decks. Our deck looks more like the typical mono red aggro than big red, but against mill, that's probably where we want to be. Boast also synergizes with Lannery since we can sag the tokens to still pump her. Alright, so they bounce my Berserker. And so we're gonna play Chandra plus for mana, play Berserker. Probably save my treasure tokens. Alright, so next room we're once again representing Boast on Berserker. And plenty of interaction available. So this was about as good of a start as we could have hoped for. Cultivate's fine. So they need some sweepers to catch them back up. And then they still need to deal with the Chandra ultimate. Talk about perfect draws. So I can plus Chandra. Does Sarkhan turn Planeswalkers into Dragons? It does. Wow. So do I have enough to plus for mana, play Sarkhan, three, four treasures, and then we can still boost Berserker? Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Can I actually kill my opponent here is a question. If I play Sarkon, turn Chandra into a dragon, use the two treasures for Lightning Strike, Lannery up to 5 with the extra treasure, 6, 7, 11, they're just dead here. I can exact seize them. Feel the heat of my flames. Although boasting with all these dragons in play would have been nice too. But might as well kill them. For single white, there's nothing I need to play around. I'm 
yeah, opponent concedes. But Lightning Strike would have killed him for sure here. Well, we got uh, some very lucky top decks. Lannery into Chandra into Sarkon. And we managed to get to seven wins at long last. So yeah, Mono Reds, Big Reds, Super Friends. Pretty effective archetype. Lost a game to Settler Rankage and a game to Mono Red Aggro. Where we could have taken a slightly different line which may or may not have worked out better, but I think I still stand by the decision there. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.